All right, hi everybody, we're gonna get started now. Uh, welcome to the WHA Virtual Library's first webinar of the 2021 year. Uh, my name is Nicole Askin. I am one of the librarians with the library and I'm gonna be presenting to you today on open educational webinars. So before we get started, uh, you do have a chat option available in the GoToWebinar settings. F please feel free to use that if at any point you have questions or are running into any problems. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be available afterwards. Uh, we will be sending out an email with the slides and it will also be available on our YouTube channel where you can also see our previous webinars. Um, however, the chat function will not be recorded, so if you do have any questions, don't worry about that part. Uh, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so first of all, I'd like to introduce the WHA Virtual Library for those of you who may not be familiar with us. We provide access to electronic resources and library services for WHA staff, as well as staff of eligible community health agencies and personal care homes. If you don't happen to have your access set up yet, you can take a look at our website, which is wjvirtuallibrary.ca, and we can get you set up with that. We provide access to an array of electronic resources. We have a very extensive list of subscriptions, including our brand new Clinical Geek subscription that we're very excited about. We also provide library services, such as literature searches, so we'll actually do research on your behalf. We have document delivery for everything that we don't subscribe to. You can still get it sent to you by email. Uh, we have education and training sessions like this one. And we also have an array of research services. So basically anything that you would need from a library, we're pretty well uh, positioned to provide for you. All right, so getting into the topic of today's webinar, what are open educational resources, commonly known as OERs? By open, we mean free to use and also free for use. So you'll see some definitions sometimes that say that anything that is free to access is an OER. That's not generally the typical definition though. Usually there's a requirement that it's under a licensing that allows for it to be reused. And we'll get into more details about that a little bit later in the presentation. By educational, uh, that includes classroom use, but it also includes things like personal learning, uh, patient teaching, or uh, staff training. So you could, for example, take an OER and adapt it for a staff training session or provide it to a patient as part of uh, their learning. And resources comprises not only the traditional textbooks, but also courses, videos, simulation, handouts, basically anything that can be used for educational purposes. So freely licensed, we're gonna get into a little bit of copyright law here. So what does freely licensed mean? Essentially, it means it's under a license that allows it to be reused freely, which means either it's in the public domain and public domain means either no copyright ever applied to it or the copyright has now expired, or it meets the five R requirements. So the five R's of OER stand for retain, meaning that you can make and control your own copy. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to pay a fee every time you wanna download it. You can reuse it, meaning that you can reuse it in its unaltered form. You can revise it, adapting it to suit the needs of your particular context. Uh, remix, meaning that you can combine it with something else, whether that's something else that you yourself have created, you can combine in more than one OER together to make something new. And finally, redistribute. That means that you are allowed to share your original, revised, or remixed OER with others. So one of the common ways that you'll see in which the five R's are met is what's called Creative Commons licensing. And there's a diagram on your screen here that shows the various types of Creative Commons licenses that are out there. So at the very top of the list here is public domain. As I mentioned, that basically means there are no restrictions whatsoever on how you can use a particular item. Moving down the list, uh, CCBY, by, by it just stands for attribution. So a by license means that you have to say, oh yeah, this I got from this other person or from this site or from this organization. SA uh, means share alike. So that what that means is you can share uh, 
resources based on this one or that use elements of this one, but they have to be released under an equivalent license. So for example, if you had a CCBOY SA item that you were sharing, you would have to publish that under a CCBOY SA license or something that's close enough that to be equivalent to that. Um, further down the list, we get into NC, which is a non-commercial requirement. So that means that you can't sell whatever it is um, that you're basing off of these items. And then we hit that orange line and items below that orange line are ones that don't meet the 5R requirements that we outlined on the previous slide. So that's our no derivatives requirement. What an ND requirement basically means is you can use this thing, but you can only use it in its original form. You can't make any remix or adaptations to it at all. So this doesn't technically meet the definition of open educational resources. And then down at the bottom there, you've got your all rights reserved, which is the typical copyright protected uh, license. It's the least open and it doesn't allow most kinds of reuse that you might be interested in doing. So it's always important if you do end up using an open educational resource of any kind that you are aware of what the license is and what the license requirements are, whether that's attributing the original author or not using it commercially or anything like that. You should always make sure that you know if I'm using it, how can I use it? And what are the restrictions on me using it? So now that we've kind of uncovered what OERs are, let's talk a little bit about where you can find them. And there's a lot of different places where you can find them out there. Uh, those include things like search tools, repositories, textbook libraries, uh, universities, um, web portals, general searching, and of course, see, asking your librarian. We're always happy to help you uncover uh, an open educational resource in your area of interest if you haven't been able to find it on your own. So we're going to go through examples of each of these options to help you understand where to look and what kind of resources are out there. So first off, let's start with a search tool. Uh, this particular example is called Oasis and just as a reminder these slides are going to be shared after so don't worry about scribbling down those URLs. But what OASIS is, is basically called a meta search tool. So this searches a number of different collections of open educational resources that are out there. So it's kind of like the Google of open educational resources. It searches a whole bunch of different things to help you find just a general idea of what is out there in a particular topic area. Not everything will be indexed in OASIS, uh, but there's it's probably your best starting option in terms of getting a good idea about what might be out there for your topic. Uh, next, we have repositories. Repositories are basically like online libraries of open educational resources. And one of the biggest ones is this one, which is OER Commons. Uh, so you can see here, I did a basic search for nursing and I got almost 1500 results, which is pretty good. Uh, it includes things basically from pre-K all the way up to university level. It's not limited to things that are going to be at a level that you might be interested in. So that's something to keep in mind. And if you see on the left hand side there, the educational standards filter there that is referring to um, K to 12 education standards in various locations. So you probably won't need to worry about that, but there are some other filters there that might be useful for you. Like you can limit by education level, you can limit by material type. So if for example, you wanted a handout versus a video, that would be where you would find that. And then you also have that license type filter so that refers to those uh, licenses that I was showing you previously. For example, you can see that this first one on the list here is under a CC BYNCSA, which means non-commercial attribution and share alike. So if you want to reuse this, you can, as long as you attribute the original author, aren't making a profit of it, and publish your remix under the same or equivalent license. The next repository on our list here is Skills Commons. Uh, this one is a bit more focused on like industry and trade uh, resources. So there's a lot of community college resources in here, a lot of um, resources that are more focused on practical skills and um, practical learning. So you can see on the left hand side here, you've got a resource that filters by industry. So for example, you could limit it to hospitals, you could limit it to nursing and residential care facilities. Um, but there's going to be a lot of things related to like community college level learning in here. So that might be useful if you're 
um, looking to upskill or looking to uh, redevelop your skills related to practical nursing, that kind of thing, uh, that's kind of what you would find in this particular resource. Merlot is a really interesting example. In general, it is similar to OER Commons in that it covers basically preschool through university level learning. But what's unique about Merlot is that they actually have a health sciences community portal, which is specifically focused on the health sciences. And it's organized according to specialties. So you could, for example, uh, limit your search to resources related to gastroenterology, for example, if that was your area of interest. It's really focused on health professions and um, is really designed in a way that makes sense for that category of um, user. So this is a really useful resource, particularly uh, if you're interested in specifically a particular specialty, this is a good place to start. Moving on now to some examples of textbook libraries. So in Canada, we have two major open educational resource textbook libraries, one run by BC Campus, which is where we got this example from. Uh, this is the Clinical Procedures for Safe Patient Care. Um, it's a openly licensed textbook that focuses on quality care based on the latest evidence. It's really a very excellent resource for that topic area. Um, but there's definitely others in this particular uh, database that are focused on textbooks of various kinds, covering things like patient safety, ethics, through nursing, pharmacology, that kind of thing, um, mostly at the university level. The other Canadian example we have is from eCampus Ontario. They have a collection of open educational textbooks. However, this particular example is actually a clinical simulation. Even though it's from a textbook library, it's actually um, a simulation based on safe feeding. So this is a really cool example. They have like full length videos of walking you through a patient scenario and figuring out, you know, how would you address this particular scenario? So as I said, open educational resources aren't just limited to textbook. There's all sorts of different resources out there that might be of interest to you. Moving on to university. So different universities have gotten really involved in the open educational resources field. Uh, one of the first in this area was this example from MIT. They have a very extensive collection of what they call open courseware. So these are anywhere from um, syllabi to full length courses on topics ranging from basically anything that you could take at university. But this particular example is in their health and medicine category. So you could see here, you could uh, access full university level, graduate level resources on mechanisms of drug actions, for example or business model innovations of global health. They've got some really rich resources in here uh, related to basically graduate level and undergraduate level health education. And they're one of the oldest and best developed examples of this at the university level. WISC Online is a bit of a different approach. They have more, rather than um, full courses, they have what they call learning objects. So these are individual uh, plug and play items that you could use for basically any sort of course or education. As you can see over on the left hand side here, they got uh, health categories ranging from clinical lab technician, dietary, EMS, all sorts of different allied health fields. But these are learning objects are things like simulations, they include videos, they include lots of different things that would be really useful for like reviewing or giving presentations about particular topic areas. They tend to be pretty short and they tend to be of this kind that maybe you can plug and play several different ones in a single presentation or education session. So that's something that's really useful from this particular site. This one I really enjoy. So this is from Ryerson University. Uh, they have what they call a virtual healthcare experience. So this, basically what they've done here is they've set up a whole hospital of simulations. So you can go, for example, to the emergency department and simulate, okay, you're an emergency nurse, here are three patients, how would you approach addressing uh, the needs of each of these patients? Or you can go to a pediatrics ward, here's a patient, how would you address his and his family's concerns? This is a really well done virtual experience. Um, that's really helpful for like reviewing not only uh, clinical procedures but also things like triage, patient and family communication. It's really a very excellent resource. They also have something similar for maternal infant care, also a very cool resource. I really enjoy how well done this particular one is. 
Moving on now to some web portals. So one of the best examples in this area is the HEAL collection out of the University of Utah. So HEAL stands for Health Education Assets Library. And they've got 22,000 uh, digital materials, including like images, videos, um, things like that, that are focused on different areas of health education. They've got a really strong histology collection. They've got a really strong neurology collection. Um, things like that are covered in this collection. And it's really focused on digital materials for health sciences education, but that can be used in a clinical practice setting as well. Similarly, the Public Health Image Library. So this is uh, run by the Centers for Disease CDC in the US. Um, it's really focused on public health, but they've also got some histology and other images in here as well. This is a great place to look if you need images for a presentation or anything, because um, again, going back to copyright law, um, works from the US federal government are typically not protected by copyright law. So things from the CDC, for example, that are by the CDC, not by a third party, can be used freely. They don't even require attribution, although of course that is best practice, but they can be used freely for any purpose. So if you need images for a presentation, for a handout, this is a great place to go to get them. Then finally, uh, other than asking us, of course, another place that you can look for educational resources is a general search. So I've shown here a couple examples. At the top version here is YouTube. I'm showing you, you can filter for Creative Commons licensed videos. Uh, so for example, if you want to show a video during an education center session or recommend a video to a patient, you can filter your results to Creative Commons licensed ones that don't have any copyright requirements. You don't have to ask for permission. You just have to make sure to attribute the original source. Similarly, in Google Images, under Tools, they have their Creative Commons license filter option, so you can actually filter the image search for items that are appropriately licensed for whatever it is that you want to do. That can be commercial, that can be non-commercial, depending on your particular needs. However, keep in mind that um, in both of these cases, you want to double check that the licensing is correct and that they do have the rights to release the items under this particular license. Uh, just do your due diligence and just make sure you understand what the licensing requirements are and what limitations there are on what you can do with these items. So here we have another few links that you're welcome to explore. Uh, the Nursing OER Environmental Scan from eCampus Ontario is a very, very extensive list of all kinds of open educational resources that are applicable to nursing. And that covers everything from some of the resources we've looked at today to different textbooks or full courses that are out there. Uh, I would definitely recommend that as a resource if you're in the area of nursing. Similarly, George Washington University Nursing has a collection of open educational resources, particularly uh, simulations and videos, again, were really excellent from that resource. Johns Hopkins has uh, similar to MIT full courses in the area of public health. So that's, they've got full syllabi, they've even got in some cases full lectures, lecture notes, that you can look at and review on your own time and then re, um, reuse as necessary. MedEd Portal is a really interesting example. It's basically a cross between a journal and an open educational resource repository because they have open educational resources, but then they have full reviews of these resources and peer reviews. So you can see an assessment of the quality of the resource, which is really cool. OpenRN is a open textbook collection focused on nursing again. And then American Society for Microbiology has another openly licensed image gallery that you can use for presentations or the like. So in terms of open educational resources, as with pretty much anything that you find online, you wanna make sure that you assess the quality and the relevance of the item to your particular area of need. So the usual rules of critical appraisal still apply. For example, you might want to assess the content, the relevancy, the accuracy, and um, any bias that might be present in a particular resource before you put it to use. Uh, we have a full webinar on critical appraisal that is available in our YouTube channel. I would definitely recommend you check that out if you haven't seen it previously because it walks through different ways of appraising online resources and assessing how appropriate they are to your needs. But there are also assessment tools that are specific to open educational resources. For example, this one from BC Campus. 
So this is focused on a faculty guide, which makes it not necessarily of the most relevance to a clinical application, but I think some of the questions are definitely still appropriate. So for example, in relevance, rather than saying, does it directly address one or more of the class objectives, you could consider, does it directly address one or more of the learning objectives that you have for either your personal learning or for the education session or the patient education that you want to convey? But definitely accuracy, production quality, accessibility are all things that could be considered outside of the classroom environment. Is the information accurate is a very big issue. Are there major content errors or omissions? Um, production quality, can it be easily navigated? Is it clear? Do the design features enhance learning or are there a lot of bells and whistles for no reason? Um, accessibility, if that's of a concern for you, that's definitely something that you can consider. Same with interactivity. And then finally, licensing. As I mentioned, whenever you're reusing something under a free license, you wanna make sure that you know what that license is and that you know what the requirements of that license are. So if something requires attribution, you wanna make sure you provide attribution. If something doesn't allow for derivative works, you wanna make sure that you're not uh, breaching those terms of the license. So just make sure that you understand what the requirements are and what they do and do not allow you to do with the item. All right, uh, so that was our brief overview of open educational resources. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those now, uh, but we also have here my email, so you can get in touch with me directly, as well as our general email. As I mentioned at the beginning of the presentation, this session has been recorded. We will be posting it on our YouTube channel and sending out the slides, hopefully within the next day or two. Uh, but in the interim, I'm happy to take any questions that anyone may have.